Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about measure the forces act on an object. This will be the third quarter topic and learning competency number one. This lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. In establishing purpose of the lesson for unlocking of content vocabulary, the students will answer the match type activity. In developing and deepening of understanding, so we will start the lesson by knowing the methods for measuring forces. So the first method is the spring scales. So spring scales are a type of weighing device that use the deformation of the spring to measure the force or weight applied to the scale. The basic principle behind the spring scale is the Hooke's law, which states that the force required required to stretch or compress a spring is proportional to the distance the spring is stretched or compressed. So how spring scales work? So spring scales use the compression or extension of a spring to measure the force applied to the scale. As a force is applied, the spring inside the scale stretches or compresses proportionally to the force. The scale then converts the spring displacement into a force measurement. So what is the units of force? The SI unit of force is the Newton. One Newton is the force required to accelerate a mass of 1 kilogram at a rate of 1 meter per second squared. Another method for measuring forces is the force sensors. So what is a force sensor? So it is an electronic devices that can accurately measure the magnitude of an applied force. Different types include the load cells, pressure sensors, and more. So how force sensors work? So use principles like electrical resistance or capacitance to detect force. So it converts the physical force into an electrical signals that can be measured. Another method for measuring forces is the force diagram or also called as the free body diagrams. So it is a graphical representations that show all the forces act on an object.
For the lesson activity, the students will design a force measure. So for the objective, at the end of the activity, the students should be able to make an improvised force measure. And for the part 2 of lesson activity, the students will measure the force applied by the earth on the object. So for the objectives at the end of the activity, the student should be able to measure the force applied by the earth on the different objects. For the part 3 of lesson activity, the students will measure the applied force to start moving an object. And for the objectives at the end of the activity, the student should be able to measure the applied force by a person to move an object at a different surface. In making of generalizations for the learner's takeaways, the students will answer the KWL chart. So using the graphic organizer, the students will answer the L column or what they have learned about the lesson. And for the reflection of learning, the students will answer the following question. 